Welcome back, Jam Citizens. Today we welcome Jam City senior concept artist PJ Reigns to break down the mechanics of character design into four basic principles. Where to start with building inspiration, down to shapes, gestures, and design composition that help bring these characters to life. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss a future video. This is stuff that I, I recommend um, that people uh, think about or at least that, that I think about the most when I'm doing something like concepts or especially characters. Gesture is a big one. Gesture, as you may recall from my last presentation, is really about that stick figure and about that, that initial uh, laying in of the center lines and the, the line of action for where a character is going to go. So you start out with um, putting points around the landmarks of where the character is going to go, like around their head, their shoulders, and their hips. Those are big landmarks. And then you would draw um, through lines through those uh, those key anchor points. And having a really strong gesture, especially in the beginning of the sketch, I think is really critical. Also, principles of design. It's kind of a boring academic term, but I really geek out on this stuff. So um, what I would pull from that for this conversation is big, medium, and small shapes. That would be um, like when you think of basic graphic design, how you um, how you arrange your character shapes just in a graphic 2D sense. So having a good combination and balance of big, medium, and small shapes to, to show something that's not as generic, um, it's good to have adjectives in your mind or at least some kind of narrative or, or prompt to to guide you when you start doing a design. Like, is the character someone who's a villain or a superhero and they need to look really brawny or maybe they use more of their brain or their intellect so they could be, um, you know, more of a, a narrow appearance but have a big head because of their brain or um, like a seductive character or whatever. Uh, shape language and contrast. You wanna choose basic shapes and, and basic um, symbols that go along with the personality and also contrast with other characters on the screen. Um, lastly, practice uh, problem areas. So when I'm doing when I'm doing like the execution of a concept, putting pen to paper and actually visualizing the stuff, I am I'm I'm, I'm running these these lessons through my head. Okay, do the hands and and uh, the hands, feet, head, and face look good are, are those things that, because um, I know that, that, that those are areas that I struggle with. So I make sure that I practice those things uh, maybe before or um, or another time from when I'm doing the actual concept, but I wanna make sure that, that those read properly because um, they're probably gonna look bad if I don't try very hard or have some kind of reference in front of me. Also stuff like drapery, just, it's gonna be personal to you. So whatever you think is, is a struggle point, then I recommend you keep all those academic theories in mind, like the stuff about the um, the principles of design and the gesture and that, that that's stuff that everyone's going to take with them. But for you personally, uh, I recommend working on problem areas, anything that, that you may have, even stuff like, you know, when I draw a character, I'm left handed. So my characters always lean to the left. I have to be cognizant of that or um, they're always facing the same way. Or when I draw drapery, it looks flat or something. Um, maybe people can point that out in, in a critique of your work. But if not, then you want to be more analytical in these things, and and I'm sure I'm sure you know you know without having to think too hard about it. What are the, the areas that really scare you about drawing? And that's it for that presentation. We'll get to the oh I meant to to add this to that the the facial expressions, the hands and feet. That's just a, a visual with that stuff. Any questions about that stuff? Oh, there's my, my chat window. Hold on a second. Let's see. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Beard. <laughs> oh, saying. I love you, saying. How's your uh, How's your little boy doing? Great. Yeah, saying's a. Uh, a new father. Um, he already had a daughter, but now he has a new son as of, what, he's about a month and a half old or so? About a month old. Wonderful. All right, get some sleep, brother. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll get into doing this sketch here, and uh, I'm just going to go. 
And the way I'm going to do this is in two steps. One is I'll I'll start drawing in like the loose gesture and like block in of a character. Um, it is not not too many details with that. And then I'm going to like try to clean it up. I'll see how much time I have left. But just throw out any comments or, or questions as they as they come up for you. Uh, first thing I usually start with is the head. I don't know how many. I'm I'm, I'm presuming that a lot of people do typically, but that would be. That'd be a good stake to, to put in the ground for where this character is going to land on the page. And you're thinking about the angle and the, um, the placement and the perspective of this stuff. So by the way, I'll point out too, this is an alien. This is a male. I wanted to make a character today that I had some some fun to them, some fun aspect that sort of fit the personality of our studio, not something too serious or realistic. Uh, again, I was I was prompted with doing something sort of stylized. So uh, just reach into the archives, thought of doing something like an alien, male, and maybe to give this person an occupation, they're gonna be a bartender. And there's many other um, descriptives descriptors that you could you could give to somebody like this that what you're I, I recommend for when you're starting your stuff put as many things as you can out there you know or do they have a dark side do they have a um, some kind of past history are they going to be part of some moment in your story where they need to go into combat so you need to give them some kind of armor or they have a love interest or they have some uh, fallacies or um, some some kind of character flaws and all that stuff if you if you speak to a real professional who's really versed in what they do they're going to have a million descriptors and feelings and thoughts about what goes into this stuff and of course the audience is going to react to it one way and, and give them more descriptors to use to inform their design so i don't want to overthink it in this sort of a uh, an exercise but um it gives me something to go on what i don't recommend doing is just uh, starting with, with nothing because uh, something that's boring or that doesn't have really any um, anything memorable or specific or special about them that's gonna be uh, I don't want to say a failure but um, it, it's it's not gonna be interesting it's not gonna be approved to go into it's gonna kind of fail in the the task of um, building and expanding on, on the story and informing what that what that uh, that character ne needs to do in the story you know these these sort of generic character types that you may see out there either something that's that someone designs or um, I, I, I would just kind of say like you want to have a reason for everything that, that you're doing with it like why is it stylized why is it realistic okay because it's gonna go in a 4k game and it needs to fit into the, this larger world or something. Um, th those are things that kind of fit into that. And something that's boring or un uninteresting, it's going to be sort of the, the, the death of you as a concept artist because then no one's going to want to see it and you're not going to have any um, anybody interested in, in, uh, in using that design. Another thing I do too is I try to channel, um, I, I try to channel stuff in culture, things from life experience or whatever. Maybe an actor that's out there, somebody that, um, that that's that's a hot topic, or or that that you're think when you think of this character, then um, who's a a person that's out there in in celebrity life that that you um, can relate it to? Oh, like you know, they they remind me of of such and such a person, and then you can use that inspiration to um, to inform your design and think of okay well that person gives me a little bit more to ponder maybe they have some weird birthmark on them or they have some body type or they dress a certain way all those things can be helpful you can take or leave whatever you you want from that but I'm just reaching for tools out there that give me um, stuff that I could use and 
you may or may not even like mention that to the art director or to the to the audience say so, yeah th this character was based on so and so they were based on um somebody in a movie or whatever batman or whoever and somebody could say oh yeah you know i could kind of see that but they remind me of of whatever and then you oh cool yeah i could use that so i wanted this guy to have um a real playful pose and he's going to be doing this this juggling act it's good to have just in a very uh, basic sense I'm, I'm not talking about the strength of de the design or anything but i like to see characters in a pose because you could take that the opportunity if you only get one shot at showing the audience your your idea then might as well put them in, in a position where they're going to be um expressing or communicating what that character is all about and uh, as you can tell, I work really fast and, and loose and rough. And I, I apologize for that. I may, I may not need to apologize for that because everyone has their own thing. Um, I know some people that just everything that flows out of their, their pen or stylus is, is brilliant and they don't need to, to warm up at all. But for me too, it's, it's kind of therapeutic and it's actually um, part of my, my, my methods where when I'm using fast, loose, long lines, then those um, th those ideas can can come out on their own and I'm not being as deliberate. You know, if you're doing something like a, a, a portrait of somebody and you're looking at their photo or you're looking at their, their likeness, then you can work slower and more deliberate because you don't need to surprise yourself. But if it's something out of your head, then do whatever method uh, suits you. But this is something that, that works for me. So to, to dial it back a little bit, I know I'm kind of jumping ahead. Um, I've got my, my head mask here and it's this oblong, um, mo most people probably know, most people on this call are, have some uh, artistic sense where a head is gonna be your, your skull back here. And then there's the, the jaw bone down here. And then the eyes are um, not quite enough time to go over all the anatomy pointers in, in a discussion like this. But this is sort of the stuff that, that I'm getting into here. And, um, you know, you want to get versed in doing the head in, in all per perspectives. So that's just stuff that with a lot of practice and um, and repetition, I guess, um, then that stuff's going to come more more freely to you. So I've got my, my head mask here. Oh, let me go back here. And then it goes down here. This is a um, the bottom of the, the neck, obviously go out to the shoulders. And then within my armature, I went to the um, the rib cage first. Now this character is actually gonna have four arms where there's gonna be some arms coming out in this direction here. But um, ask anybody who's doing a figure drawing where they've they've got their, their core uh, armature, let's call it, or their, their core stick figure. It's gonna be based on, there's some feet and then there's your your hands and stuff. So you've got primarily this this core section here of shoulders and pelvis. And then you can go out into your various appendages. The head is, um, there's really not many joints on it too. Like it, it's gonna just move in different positions, but in many ways, like take, take the face away from the, 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 the notion of the head. Um, the hands or the fingers or even the feet, those can do more of a performance and communicate more of a, a, an idea than the head position can. This character's head could be could be down, it could be pointed back, it could be pointed up, and it's um, sort of autonomous from what the body is doing. If, if this was a headless character, then it's still going to be pretty clear that that person is doing something athletic or acrobatic or whatever. 
Okay, so we'll go back to our our block in here. Okay, and I want to be, this is a really critical part where when you're drawing the pelvis, I like to think of this thing in perspective. So it's got it's sort of, sometimes people put this like in the, the form of a cube where it's got this perspective on it. And this is like a, uh, a hip over here and then there's another hip over here. So you just want to be clear for yourself, like what, what side that this stuff is on, you know, cause then you're going to know what perspective to make if they have a belt on or if there's a zipper or pocket or what position that their knee is in. You don't want to make them um, all uh, like with, with uh, weird joints and then it's not going to make any, any visual sense. So even with perspective um, or with, with character design, let's say, you still can't get away from perspective. It's still very much a part of the equation. And then as much as possible, like I was saying earlier, um, I like to be loose with my with my gesture lines. These are what I'm calling gesture lines. And I gave myself an out because this dude is an alien. And so he can really be whatever I want. He doesn't have to have equal upper arm to, to lower arm position and all that stuff. It could be, you could have a tiny upper arm and then super long, like he's meant to have like tentacle forearms and fingers and stuff. How are we doing on time? About to run out of time. I have some shapes in mind of, of stuff that I, um, I'll, I'll just say briefly, when you're gonna make, let's say this is like the, um, the pelvis here, and then you're gonna go into the, from the femur upper leg here, down into the tibia fibula, um, this upper leg to the lower leg, then it's real simple. You just, I put these points here for like, there's the knee, here's the, the hip, here's the ankle, and then, just like with anything, when you're making a cylinder, you're, you're gonna kind of um, fill that stuff in. So once again, with, with the perspective, you can determine what angle that stuff is going, but that, that's the idea there, is you're just making a tubular or a um, conical or uh, cubic form around the stuff. It's, it's very simple. Try to make it as, as easy to repeat or as easy to digest as possible and making a stick figure with two brackets around it is as about as simple as it as it can get and i have grand ideas about costuming and patterns and color and stuff that could all those are tools available to you to make something like it like an alien very um, alien-like and have a lot of the personality there every time you add one of those um, one of those areas or one of those ideas and one of those those layers then that's another opportunity for storytelling where you could say okay um, I mean, in, in my mind this dude is wearing some flamboyant Hawaiian shirt and that says okay he's got some sense of humor you know but for me to go in and make palm trees and flamingos all over his shirt would just take forever. But if I had more time and, and wherewithal, then that's stuff that if it pops in your mind or you, uh, you happen to want to do an iteration on your design to, to add in those little details, then go for it. Cause I love that kind of stuff. One time I took a, a character design class where um, it felt like most of the time in the class was spent just talking about ideas of characters. And I don't even think it was really a character. It was more of an illustration, like painting class where people were doing like fine art. But I came in the class and I'm like, why aren't we drawing and painting? People are, they're just sitting there drawing, like making a list on the chalkboard about all the, the story of the character. And in a lot of ways, that's really, um, 
helpful to, to do something about, about that. They're, they're riffing on ideas about their cast of characters and just filling out what the world is going to be in a, like, like it's, it's all verbal. And then they go in and say, okay, now I know exactly what I need to draw. So you could brainstorm in, in line work or paint or collage or whatever, but you could also um, brainstorm, like just spitball ideas with, with others, maybe non-artists and say, well, what do you think of this idea here? So that's him so far. Pretty loose. Any questions on that step at all? In the next, hopefully no more than, than 10 minutes, I'll try to clean him up. So that was the first pass there. Step one. And then step two here is is real, as long as you have a clear um, thumbnail for yourself, then it should be pretty elementary and straightforward. If you're really unsure about anything or your um, your perspective's off or, or whatever doesn't quite jive in there, in that design, and problems still need to be solved, then make another thumbnail. Don't move forward with cleanup. I see people do it all the time where they'll um, they'll polish, a, they're polishing a turd, you know, that they're not really going in and thinking critically about how something works or, or how that design kind of looks. I've pondered this design for a while here, so I'm um, fine with, with how he looks. But then again, if I showed it to another person, then they may have totally different take on him or her. And then they'll say, what if this, what if this? And you don't want to go too far down the road. That's more of a production uh, note for like working in a studio or working collaboratively collaboratively with other people but that's kind of my life is to do my art with others for others so I'm used to that sort of the, the iteration I, I rarely take something all the way through to, to completion um, just for, for myself it's usually for uh, for someone else and I need to bounce those ideas off of them before I go further and that thumbnail step would be that that point assuming that the person gets it you know that you you uh drew it clear enough to where they can they can understand what's going on and then you can have a, a bigger discussion And I'm deliberately not, um, not that I'm scared to avoid it, but with anatomy or, I mean, th there's so many talking points with with uh, drawing in general or, or character design, whatever. Um, I have so many ideas to share. So if you guys have any have any things that, that you wanna know, let me, let me know, um, but I could just go on forever. I could have this class all day because uh, there's really, as long as you could study it, like in a school setting, or as long as you're talking to another artist, there's, there's lots of ways to, to think of this stuff. And us as, as artists, professionally at least, um, we're always exposing ourselves to, to new ideas, new techniques. Like I was saying, with, with each one of those influences that, that hit me the strongest, um, those are people that they, they may see the world differently than I do. And they have different world experience, just different graphical sense and taste in, um, in characters or, or in storytelling. And perhaps it's not even like, uh, about their, their talent level on a, on the ability to like execute a design by saying, Oh, this person's the best, you know, artist ever, but they, they really don't need to be um, and Tim Burton stuff. You could, you could say it's, it's awful in a, in an aesthetic sense, but in an idea sense and in the, along the, the, the lines of like 
pushing design and making something really novel and different. Um, can't beat it. And now it's funny because he's kind of like a caricature and he is he is his own style. When, when an artist says his name, then it becomes like, oh, you're just doing his style, like, like a Thomas Kincaid. It's an art center person um, where it's people roll their eyes saying, oh, really? I mean, for a long time, it, probably even now, doing a shape like this, this is like the, the Tim Burton spiral, you know, and a spiral is so universal and prevalent in anything, in alien runes or Aztec cultures or, um, you know, in little girls chalk drawings or whatever. But the Tim Burton spiral, because of its like visual appeal and the way that it, um, it he's got these hilltops in Nightmare Before Christmas and all his other projects, even in like Alice in Wonderland, it's like, they're, they're so classic, then, um, then that stuff becomes known for him. And artists would try to avoid doing that stuff because they didn't want to be like Tim Burton. They were just, they were just trying to be their, their own thing. When I want to go fast, then I'll just zoom out on it like this. And this is true of anything with art. When you don't want to nitpick it, then pull back on the zoom level. And you'll see the whole picture. You'll see if you're taking forever on a given area, then you'll see out of the corner of your eye, oh shoot, I gotta do, I got a lot more left to do, so I better hurry up. This is a super random story. This, this thing happened to me yesterday. It was, it was crazy. It's not character design related. Um, it's just, I haven't, I've been at my house all day, so I haven't shared it with anybody. Um, one of my neighbors, he comes banging on my gate outside. Hey, there's a huge lizard in your driveway. What? Okay. I have like garden lizards. Like who cares? Um, he's like, no, this thing is huge. Like it's huge. It's huge. He, he was like choking on his food. <laughs> he, he was barefoot. He ran over, he had, driven down the street and he was like um, in a panic. Like there's a huge lizard. Well, long story short, somebody's um, alligator <laughs> type thing. It was, it's called a Tago lizard. I found out later. Um, it had escaped and it came over to my house. And the craziest thing was um, nobody knew what it was or how to identify it. It was like an alien. <laughs> it just looked like a huge um, like Gila monster uh, monitor lizard something from like uh you know easter island or <laughs> something from the tropics and uh and we had to take care of it so so we didn't call animal control i i knew that one of the neighbors had this exotic um these exotic animals and he was keeping a dinosaur in his backyard i guess so it got through the gate and escaped. And I went to bang on his door and I'm like, oh, okay, I know where this, this little guy's from. So um, I went over to the, I went, I walked down the street and I'm, you know, in my pajamas or whatever. And the guy was like, I don't know where he was. He apparently he was like passed out, but um, finally he came out. Like it took him, took him like over an hour to get a, to get a clue that his long lost dinosaur escaped so that's my fun adventure in quarantine land anybody else have any fun stories
Yeah, and you can go back and, and hide most of this stuff underneath here. There we go. Thank you, everyone. Everyone have a good, uh, safe rest of your week and uh, stay in touch, please.